It's the Criterion. It's the Criterion. 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 In. 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 Criterion. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Criterion Project. We are really happy to be here today to be talking about a really fun comedy that I love called Talk of the Town. And uh, we have a very special guest with us today, uh, but I am film critic Rachel Wagner and Conrado is here. Yeah, I'm right here. Yes, and our guest is film critic Jen Johans is here to talk about this fun comedy with us. And, and Jen, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, this is so exciting. You were on the Hallmarkies podcast previously, and yeah, it so <laughs> it was really fun. And we did the, uh, I'll put a link in the description. We, t- we did a, 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 the 10 questions, uh, romantic comedy questionnaire kind of thing that you had written up. And it was, it was a lot of fun. And, and uh, so I, when I was uh, thinking of uh, doing Talk of the Town, I immediately thought of you. And uh, why don't you introduce... Uh, Introduce yourself to our, our listeners and uh, tell us uh, your experience with the Criterion Collection. Okay, my pleasure. My name is Jennifer Johans or Jen Johans on Twitter. I am tweeting under at Film Intuition, and that is actually the name of my website, which is filmintuition.com. I've written online since, oh boy, I'm going to age myself here, but about 2006. I also have a podcast called Watch with Jen that I recently launched a few months ago. And I love Criterion films. I've reviewed a number of them. I used to get a bunch of screeners sent to me from Criterion. So Mm -hmm. it was my complete honor to review like the upcoming discs. So I have a lot of reviews on my site of Criterion titles, and I was so excited when you guys asked me to join you. That's so great. Do you have any particular favorites? Do you, I don't, are you a collector of the DVDs? Or? I am, and I'm like trying to watch that because it's obviously quite an expense, but I do have some favorites. I love the... Jacques Tati and the Jacques Demy box sets. Those are wonderful. Um, their broadcast news disc is great. They did Michael Mann's Thief is also a really good uh, release. And oh, all of the Douglas Sirks I really love. All That Heaven Allows mm-hmm. and Obsession, Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times. I don't know, too many favorites. Yeah. I'd be here all day. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. And would you say you have a particular affinity to uh, to romantic comedies, to screwball comedies, to that kind of thing? Or you just yeah. like a little of everything? I watch a little of everything. I'm kind of known for watching a lot of crime movies, but I mm-hmm. also love screwball comedies and romantic comedies. So I really watch everything. I also am a huge Francophile. So I watched probably too many French movies. I watched all kinds of foreign films, though. Yeah. But yeah, I was very excited. I think we even talked about the talk of the town when mm-hmm. we were doing that romantic comedy podcast yeah. on Hallmarkies. Yeah. So that was really cool. Yeah, that was really, really fun. Uh, so have you been able to watch anything uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks uh, on the Criterion channel that you'd like to share with us? Yeah. Aside from our, our movie <laughs> we're talking about. Oh, you're fine. Um, I love this Jean Arthur collection. Yes. Love, it's so good. I'm a huge fan of hers. And I watched The More the Merrier, which I thought I had seen, and I guess I did not. It was so much fun. Another just really hilarious movie, actually made by the director of this one, George Stevens. So yeah, that was a blast. I also watched Andrea Arnold's um, Wuthering Heights, which is going to leave soon, I think. It was interesting. It was kind of a daring retelling of the, the tale. wasn't like the biggest fan, but I did appreciate what she was going for and really interesting cinematography. Mm, yeah, I actually recently watched that as well for um, 
uh, we did the Sundance Now uh, app on as a promotion, as a sponsor for Hallmarkies. So I watched it on there, and oh. uh, and because I was trying to find something that would be interesting to to uh, you know the Hallmarkies crowd, uh, and uh, yeah, it was different, but <laughs> <laughs> you know it's 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 such a it's kind of a weird book. I mean, we, it's a classic, really but when you really think about it, it's sort of a weird book. So. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of twisted. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Uh, Conrado, have you been able to watch anything recently on the Criterion channel? Yes, I have. All right. Have, uh, something I think that might be interesting to you, Rachel. Do you know uh, the Brothers Quay, uh, uh, brother animators from Britain? Um, there is a Quay Brothers collection on Criterion Channel right now with a bunch of their shorts. And they're these very um, sort of uh, dark stop motion animation shorts. Um, so I watched a couple of those. Um, I watched one called Street of Crocodiles, which is this um, very surreal, uh, kind of like a Tim Burton meets David Lynch sort of uh, vibe. But the animation in them it's really, really incredible. Um, so I think uh, you should check them out because they seems like they are very kind of like pioneers in the world of animation and, and kind of like maybe not as well known, but I, I would say it's definitely worth a, a, a shot. Cool, I will definitely check that out. Uh, I haven't heard of those. Uh, so that, that sounds really up my alley for sure. Uh, anything else? Um, yeah, I've been watching a lot, a lot else, but I, I think I'll leave it at that for now. All um, right, very good. One recommendation at a time. Yes, well, I, like Jen, have also been going through the Gene Arthur collection, and mm -hmm. uh, I had to watch Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Uh, I watched both the Frank, uh, well, two, the two of the, both the ones I watched for Frank Capra, uh, her films, uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and Mr. Deed Goes to Town, and uh, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town is probably the sweetest, most warm-hearted movie you'll ever see in your life. Uh, mm -hmm. It's such a warm, it's just such a sweet movie. <laughs> so uh, I love me about Gary and Gary Cooper, and he just plays this really simple man who uh, who ends up inheriting all this money and this house, and uh, everybody's kind of jaded and, and kind of determined to get bring him down. Uh, to their level by the end and uh it's it's just a, it's such a sweet movie i love it and uh, and then mr smith goes to washington uh is uh is probably i mean it's one of the tour de forces of jimmy stewart's career uh it's so iconic and uh it's it's one of the like most iconic frank capper movies also and uh i mean it's great i love it and uh, so, yeah, that was fun. And I want to get to watch all the ones in the whole collection because I love her. I think she's so funny and just brings the humor out of any role that she's in. So, uh, so let's go ahead then and let's talk about Talk of the Town. The reason why I wanted to pick this one, I could have picked either of the ones that I just mentioned, but I don't know, I just feel like this one's a little bit more underrated I feel like people don't know about it. And even though it was very well received when it came out, I, it's not one people talk about when they think of Cary Grant movies, when they think of classics. And I just really enjoy it. I particularly enjoy the script. I think it's really fun. The, the mixtures of the screwball comedy with the, uh, the, um, with the sort of the philosophic banter back and forth between the three three characters i'm usually not a fan of a love triangle but i think this is a really fun one uh they actually filmed two endings uh and then they test screened it to see who the, the test audience wanted her to be with which is kind of fun and uh, and of course you know it's hard to beat Cary Grant. Yeah, not surprising <laughs> the one with that ending. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. There's just lots of scenes that make me laugh, like when she when she freaks out about the egg. And she's like, ah, egg, and, and uh, that that makes me laugh, and uh, and just um, 
the uh, the you know the scenes where they're they're is is he going to make is they're stopping to make the phone call and then well I am going to make the phone call and the banner banter back and forth and you just hear her just like what is happening here and I don't know I think it's really funny and so I enjoy it and uh, Jen what did you think getting to rewatch this uh, film I think it's a blast I yeah. have not seen it probably since the nineties I would guess mm -hmm. and yeah I think it was a lot of fun. You mentioned Frank Capra, and this seems almost like a Capra-esque kind of movie. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of, you know, pontification about the Constitution and the law, and it seems very much like it could have been made by Capra and maybe written by Robert Riskin. Mm -hmm. But I, I love that it just sort of carries the Jean Arthur that we know from those movies into this as well. I think she's great here. She has this confidence that I love so much. It's like this sort of brash idea of herself. And she's bold. She's kind of the, the heroine, the woman you want to be, sort of exuding this confidence. And nobody does that quite like Dean Arthur. So it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love when she's like, yeah, I, I love breaking out into a cold sweat every time the doorbell rings. <laughs> um, and I also love when she breaks his his uh, umbrella. It's like the first I've had that umbrella for 11 years. I know. That's so bad. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but Conrader, what did you think of it? Is your first time watching it? It is my first time watching it. It is my first time, turns out, watching a Jean Arthur uh, movie, mm -hmm. of which you guys have mentioned her, both of you. So um, I wanted to bring that up because, um, uh, I don't know, I don't want to be the party pooper, but I think I want to uh, hear what you guys have to say. And maybe like, you'll have to explain to me uh, what this Jean Arthur situation is. I, uh, I thought the movie was fine. I wasn't particularly... Uh, impressed by it so I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing why you guys like it so much um the thing that was most interesting to me was that i don't know if you guys will agree but to me this was definitely a love triangle in which the actual love story that i was most interested in was between carrie grant and the professor because they the way they looked at each other and the way they had their conversations about law and and you know, even when they hit each other in the face, before they do it, they say such tender words and they like have such a warm feeling yeah. for yeah. you and things like that. And at the end, when he comes to the Supreme Court uh, thing and they look at each other in the audience and they have kind of like the screwball comedy arc in the movie. And in my opinion, I wanted them to get together and Gene Arthur kept getting in the way. So it was like, Where, who's this woman? Get her out of here. These men are falling in love. Can't you see? Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know. I don't know what you guys uh, think. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Uh, Jen, what do you think about that? I think that's a really interesting read, and I can kind of get that a little bit. I think maybe one of the reasons why the love triangle works so well is because it's equal throughout all three parts. I am probably in the minority here, but I was kind of thinking she should have ended up with Ronald Coleman a mm -hmm. bit. I mean, who doesn't love Cary Grant? He's amazing. But I thought she had better chemistry with Ronald Coleman. That might have been because, well, this is the second movie she made with Cary Grant. I actually prefer the other one they made, which is Only Angels Have Wings for Howard Hawks in 1939. That's leaving Criterion at the end of the month. I'm like very brokenhearted about that. But, and I guess they didn't like really click that well when they were making these and so I don't know if that carried over a little bit but I thought her chemistry with Ronald Coleman was something special in this one mm -hmm. yeah I, I mean I could have seen either her with either of them uh I especially once he shaves his beard <laughs> then it, it feels I don't know he does look way younger with without the beard and uh the, his proposal though is so business-like yeah that that's i i think that that maybe makes me think oh at least at least carrie grant is more 
romantic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. He clearly is not in love with her. Neither of them is. They're in love with each other, the two men. That's what's going on here. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I think this this does such a good job of bringing in this sort of like physical comedy, this sort of slapstick comedy, in ways that make me laugh. Like even just the uh, <laughs> the the, the Borscht Sellerman <laughs> is like I don't know his uh, his determination to go and get the uh, uh, that he's going to find Dilge and he's an American citizen and Americans watch out for other Americans and and the way just his eyes and the way i don't know, makes me laugh and uh and uh there's just uh lots of sort of shenanigans like when he ends up wearing when Ronald coleman ends up wearing like cap ends up wearing the shoes that the slippers that oh, yeah. dilge had worn and then the dogs <laughs> she's like what's going on and uh i don't know i guess it's just the kind of thing that makes me laugh uh, is a lot of stuff in this movie uh, like I said, particularly that whole scene when she, when she stops him from seeing the headline with this, she's like, you already had your egg day. <laughs> that makes me laugh. I think it's funny. Uh, and, and I, I, I do love the banter between the two of them as far as like things, as they're talking about law and the facts alone are a nut without a kernel. And, uh, and then you, you connect the law your way or on random sentimentality and you have violence and disorder and you connect and you connect it your way and you have a Greek statue, beautiful, but dead. And, uh, it's, it's one of those movies that I think would probably work really well as a play. And yeah. a, a lot of times I really enjoy that. And I think that that's, that kind of banter is really fun. And, uh, I just, I think that combination of of a uh, sort of the physical con comment the the screwball co antics and the uh, everybody getting punched every five seconds <laughs> um, but what did you guys think of his man tilney how did you feel about that character because it was interesting because i was reading that at the time it was actually kind of that they saw him as like breaking stereotypes but now it can feel pretty cringy i think now but yeah. at the time it was actually like this is different than I don't know, so I thought that was interesting. What do you what did you think of that, Conrado? Yeah, um uh I can definitely see what you were were what you were saying. Um I I found him actually to be kind of like pretty uh typical representation for the time without being like particularly offensive or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But it did seem like a you know like a servant role and he seems very uh he doesn't seem like a full character, right? He seems like he just has his best interest at heart of the the, the professor. Um, so, mm -hmm. is that what we're talking about? The the black the black yeah yeah character, right? Yeah mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, so I don't know. Uh, do you know why people thought he was particularly um, breaking stereotypes back then? I mean, maybe because he was seen as sort of an equal, as far as in like Cap's mine as far as going to him for advice and maybe mm. i don't know uh but uh I but that's why i was reading on wikipedia <laughs> so take it out yeah. for what it's worth <laughs> but uh but jen what did you think of that was that of that role um well i can see that it's better than sort of some of the 1930s characters yeah because this is 1942 so it was pretty early yeah but at the same time like he cries when he shaves his beard a little bit cringy in yeah. places but yeah, i appreciated they were trying something new at least mm -hmm. wasn't you know quite the gone with the wind or something too over the top so yeah yeah, so yeah did, you, did you have a philosophy of law that you agree do you, are you more <laughs> of a dilge man or a or a woman or or more of a uh not to get into politics i guess or a light gap <laughs> Um, more I, persuasive in their arguments <laughs> oh yeah i'm i'm mixed on that yeah <laughs> i don't know it was yeah. interesting what i found really interesting was uh sydney buckman one of the screenwriters was blacklisted later and oh, interesting surprising because the movie seems so like you know pro-america and what we were representing so yeah yeah but I can see it a little bit because if you look at Dilge's character, 
he's a little bit more of sort of a he, i don't think he's a communist but he's a little more on those on that end of things i would say and whereas uh whereas the uh the light cap character is definitely more of a traditional conservative kind of side of things mm -hmm. and uh and so i can see it a little bit because he's kind of the hero Dilges. yeah that's guess, interesting yeah. yeah that's interesting and yeah you never think of borscht the the same way after this movie <laughs> i was thinking i was like i gotta try it with an egg in it one day <laughs> well very good well we have some questions that we do uh and so we talk about what makes this a criterion film it's not in the collection obviously but uh is it just it being attached to gene arthur you think or jen do you think there's any other reasons why you'd say i think it's attached to gene arthur i also think it's a great representation of screwball comedies mm -hmm. but i don't know it it could on its own merit i guess enter the collection but i see it more as adjacent to yeah. some of their other films like again i would encourage conrado because he hadn't seen any gene arthur to go watch only angels have wings which mm -hmm. is just a wonderful movie with um gene arthur and Cary Grant, more of a drama, even though there's like some funny lines, but yeah, I think, and that is in the collection. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's interesting if you've seen one to see the other, but I don't know if it would enter the collection, but who knows? <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's not obscure in the right kind of ways, you uh, know, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like super influential. It's not one that's like people are super nostalgic for. Uh, it's so I think it would have to be kind of included in some kind of collection, some kind of box set or something like that, in order for it to be added. True. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Did you have any thoughts on that, Conrado? Um, yeah, I think I agree. I agree with most of what you guys are saying. I actually uh, don't find this a particularly strong screwball comedy. I feel like George Stevens has maybe like a his hand is a little too heavy for it you know like i i kind of like the lighter touch of like a howard hawks or something um, this with all of the or even Fr frank capra sometimes with with all the stuff about the law i feel like this was was trying to be a little too um maybe we can talk about this when we get to the pretentious scale but i feel like it was trying to be about something big and important when i thought it would be better off just being fun uh, and comedic um, mm -hmm. but I wanted to talk to you guys about Gene Arthur because I find it uh, I, I'm trying to get over the fact that I had never heard of this woman and she's apparently such an important figure and, and I'm trying to figure out how could it be that I they had never heard of her and she was one apparently she was called the queen of screwball comedies she was one of the biggest stars of the early 40s and she had a I went on Wikipedia also and started reading about her and and she has a very strange career in which she was extremely popular in like the late 30s early 40s and then she kind of just retired and and did very few movies for the last uh, couple of decades of her career mm -hmm. and you know so um i don't know what, what can you guys tell me about about Jean arthur what do you like so much about her why do you think she's an important figure well i think that she's just those two just the frank capra mr deeds goes to town and mr smith goes to washington are really iconic movies and uh, that people love and uh that i think a lot of people would put honestly i think a lot of people put those movies right up there with your wizard of oz's and your i mean uh, it's i don't know where it lands on that where either of them lands on the afi great movie list but i'm positive mr smith mr washington's on there i'd be shocked if it's not uh and uh so i don't know those are just like beloved films so i think mm -hmm. that helps a lot that she's in both of those and she's just i don't know she's she's funny she's sarcastic uh she's uh i think easy to relate to uh i don't know what do you think jen 
I think those are really good points. She was also in another great one that Frank Capra did, uh, You Can't Take It With You, mm -hmm. which is probably far more whimsical and screwball. It's, it's a little bit, um, it, you know, using the progressive um, ideals, which I'm okay with because I'm pretty left. But um, I think Jean Arthur sort of represents independence and goodness and sweetness. She's also just got an economy with words. She's very quick. Um, there's a wonderful introduction to her and what made her interesting by uh, the film critic Farron Smith Nemi, which is on the Criterion channel right now. If you go into that Jean Arthur collection, you can find her uh, introduction to Jean Arthur, and I would encourage everyone to go check that out because um, that was really cool to see Farron encapsulate her in such wonderful words. And Jean Arthur, I also liked some of the dramas she did later too. Um, of course, she's in Shane. She's just an interesting figure to me mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons, but yeah. Um, she seemed to me on, on first impression to have this sort of like a little bit of an every woman quality mm -hmm. in this movie. She's kind of like, you know, kind of, she's always trying to keep things together and barely holding on, right? Because yeah. all this stuff is going on around her. Um, she's got these two guys and one of them is falling in love with her. The other one is the, you know, escaped convict. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so do you think that's that's something that she brings to to her movies? And also, do you think this, how would you see this as one of her performances? Do you think this is like one of her better ones, or like I don't know? I would say she. I wouldn't say I haven't seen Shane or a few of her other roles, but uh, she's one of those actresses that I feel like kind of gives the same performance, but does it really really well. So if you didn't like her in this, you might <laughs> you might not like her in other ones. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, I know she she brings the funny. She finds the funny in the scripts, and even something mm -hmm. like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Her sarcasm, uh, it because because she's she's the sort of the the tough talking uh, girl who uh, who's the contrast to uh, to Jimmy Stewart's idealistic. Uh, you know she's the world weary kind of character in, uh mm -hmm. in that film and uh so i think that's what she's great at is finding the funny in the in the roles mm. and this i don't know i just have always felt like it was underrated because to me it makes me laugh and i think the script the way that's able to combine the 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 thoughtful banter with mm -hmm. the slapstick to me works really well and is very funny so I've always felt it was and it underrated. Was, and I think it was a pretty big hit at the time, right? And it got a lot of uh, mm -hmm. Academy Award nominations, even though yeah. it didn't really end up winning anything. Um, yeah. But yeah, so definitely one that uh, has been a little bit forgotten, even though, yeah. you know, it had its moment. Right, right, right. Uh, where, for you, Jen, we have a, we have a pretentiousness scale, one to 10, uh, of, you know, t number 10, is like super abstract Godard film. <laughs> and number one is like your most mainstream, most accessible film that you could watch. So where would you say that Talk of the Town ranks for you on that scale? Boy, um, maybe like three. Mm -hmm. It's pretty mainstream, but there are some, you know, political or philosophical ideals going through that might make it a little bit less mainstream, but not too much. It's still very enjoyable. You can watch it as a comedy. You don't have to even pay attention to everything else or watch, you know, you can find in it whatever you're looking for. So I would say maybe like a three. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you four. How about you? That's why I also said it was a three because okay. I think it's super approachable. I think anybody that could watch, I don't know, your crazy rich Asians or you know whatever is your your uh your more sort of romantic comedy of the of today I think we'll, we'll be fine watching this uh it's uh it does have those 
those themes of law and whatever, but I feel like it's almost always couched in kind of a, a little bit of a jovial way. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, the, uh, you know, you've got Cary Grant it helps a lot because he's, he's so fun. He's another one who finds the funny in, in his scripts. And, uh, so yeah, I, I, I actually have given it a three as well. Uh, what about you, Conrado? Um, I think this is an interesting case because I think for me, something that's pretentious, I, I think of something that it's kind of like uh, trying to to reach at certain things that it is not able to grasp, you know, like certain like highfalutin themes or, or whatever. And I do think that this movie, uh, even though the thing with the law, I don't think it's it works quite as well as, as it's supposed to. I don't think the movie really... Um, you know, it's not the kind of movie that it's going to go into a, like a huge, true and honest uh, discussion about these two sides of the law. It's kind of like a comedy, you know. Um, that being said, I think I, I will put it at a three or maximum four. I think, I think I'm pretty much in agreement with you guys. It's, it is a, a mainstream, you know, entertainment first and foremost. Yes. Very good. All right. Good. Okay. So I, 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 we before we talk about our next episode we like to pitch what we think it could be a remake of this film and <laughs> it's hard because they don't really make screwball comedies anymore uh but basically i have it's set at christmas of course <laughs> set at christmas nora played by alicia witt who if you know hallmark movies she is the funniest of all the Hallmark leading ladies. And she can really pull off as close to a screwball comedy leading lady as we have. If you need proof of that, watch the movie Very Merry Mix-Up, which is totally screwball and crazy. Uh, but she's, <laughs> she's great. Anyway, so basically she rents out her duplex to two men. One is a police officer and one is, unbeknownst to her, on the run. And... <laughs> And I couldn't decide if maybe either one or both of them should have a child of some kind uh, to, because uh, that would be a very, like, if one, or if one of them's like a widower, because that's a very hallmark, like the hot widower. And uh, <laughs> um, it's hard because typically you don't want to leave one in the lurch and not getting a, a romantic interest. And also you couldn't do it exactly like this movie because you, in order for it to be a Hallmark movie, you can't have the heroine committing a crime. That's not allowed. And uh, so you, <laughs> you could have it on Netflix and <laughs> she could commit the crime, I guess. But anyway, and so you have these two men that are renting her duplex. It'd be like a lodge, like a, like a uh, Alpine ski lodge kind of thing for Christmas. And they, they both have like really different ideas of like how to celebrate Christmas. One is like, all crazy with huge lights and flashing signs and and the whole thing and then the other is more like traditional and, and and classy and whatever so they hate each other and she's like torn in between the two and and uh, as they're kind of battling each other as well and it just could be really fun and funny and uh there could be some kind of town festival that they are also competing in and she could maybe be the judge and there could be like a light festival. And, and so the, she has to judge that as well. And it could just be great. It would be great. I was thinking you could have Paul Green, who is sometimes billed as Hallmark's Cary Grant, as one of the guys. And then you could have Victor Webster, who would be the, be the more like classy one. <laughs> and uh, you could call it the, uh, the Christmas caper. I guess, or the Christmas, Christmas something. I don't know, but that was basically kind of what I'm thinking. I think Hallmark should hire you. I like that <laughs> idea. <laughs> there is yeah. nothing I love more than writing pitches. I that wasn't one of my best, but I was just sp trying to figure out how to make this this crazy uh this concept make it work because it feels so hallmarky <laughs> to me um but uh but i love i do i really love creating pitches i think it's so fun so oh. so you'd you'd watch the uh the um alicia witt 
Yes. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yes. All right, Jen, did you get to do um, your pitch? Yes, I didn't go into quite as much detail. Like, I just assumed this would be like a straight remake or maybe updated. Okay. You know, I was trying to cast it. And in my mind, I was thinking about John Hamm and Isla Fisher. Mm. Mm. Two funniest people on the most recent season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. They were in two different episodes. But in 2016, they co starred in the same movie. Keeping Up with the Joneses, which also co-starred Gal Gadot and Zach Galifianakis. It wasn't great, but it was still watchable. But both of those actors are really good with dialogue. And I thought they would be very well. I think that Isla Fisher is kind of a screwball heroine, or she plays that role very well. I think she would be a wonderful modern version of a of a Jean Arthur and then rounding out the trio I was thinking maybe like a Ryan Gosling both he and John Hamm are you know charming attractive and they could actually play either role I was thinking it might be more interesting and surprising if Gosling were the nominee for the Supreme Court and John Hamm was the one that gets the girl I thought that might be an interesting twist that was my only mm-hmm. thought on that. All right. Yeah. I do you think that there's a market for this kind of thing that we could see, ever see a resurgence for this kind of small uh kind of romantic comedy uh again or do you think it's I don't know, it's time is <laughs> like you just don't see this type of screwball comedy ever. I know. I I keep hoping that we're going to get another resurgence mm-hmm. in a comedy. I'm actually yeah. wearing a film by Nora Ephron shirt today. So um, I love these movies mm-hmm. and comedies, romances from the 90s. And I think if we, maybe we'd have to start on Netflix, but yeah. if enough of these get made and do well, then mm-hmm. maybe we're going to see more. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm being stupidly optimistic. I mean, it's so dumb because like, think about it. You could make, if you just did a straight remake, it has like two sets. Pretty much. Cheapest movie ever to make. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's just one house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, or Alpine Ski Lodge. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alpine Ski Lodge. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, very good. I love that. So, Conrado, what did you have for a remake idea? Yeah. So, like I said before, to me, this is essentially a gay movie. So, I think they should just make a gay remake in which everyone of the characters is gay. So I think you can cast Matt Bomer, you can cast Jonathan Groff, and you can cast, uh, I think Jonathan Groff probably the Gene Arthur part. I wanna see him running around trying to keep things together. Uh, Matt Bomer would obviously be Cary Grant because he's a beautiful man. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the professor, I was thinking uh, Coleman Domingo, who is maybe not as well-known an actor. He played the dad in If Beale Street Could Talk. And I think, and he's a really good, uh, Broadway actor. Oh. Um, so I think uh, those three are all three very handsome men who I would love to see uh, get in romantic relationships. And I think for the director, uh, I know that Pedro Almodovar has been trying to uh, make an English movie for a while, like mm-hmm. an English language film, and he always gets cold feet at the last minute. Um, but I think maybe he, he, I think he's done some of the most uh, hilarious uh, screwball comedies especially early in his career if you guys yeah. have ever seen uh, women on the verge of a nervous breakdown that yeah. movie is yeah. essentially a huge screwball comedy it takes place in this apartment and people are like getting uh they are passing out because they're drinking soup that has like sleeping pills in it and and crazy things going on um and i think he would do a great job and i would definitely watch that i All think right. that's good. yeah I would love to see a return for El Motivar back to the comedies. Right. That's a good idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be fun. All right. Well, very good. Uh, so we have three ideas. Let us know if you're listening, which remake you would want to Greenlight and what do you think of Gene Arthur and of Talk of the Town and the collection if you watched it on Criterion Channel. I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts on that. 
Uh, but real quick, let's talk about our movie for our next episode. Uh, so, Conrado, what have you chosen for our next episode? That's right. It's my turn to pick. And uh, there is a movie coming out later this year in December, supposedly. We'll see how this whole pandemic thing shakes out. Um, Steven Spielberg's remake of West Side Story, but we wanted to get ahead of the curve and uh, beat him to the punch. So we're doing the original West Side Story um, directed by um, Robert Wise and Jerome Robbins, a classic musical uh, that won a bunch of Oscars, including Best Picture, one of the most uh, acclaimed musicals uh, on stage and on the screen. So I'm really looking forward to talking about that. Mm -hmm. Me too. I love uh, West Side Story. So uh, that was one of the earliest uh, m musicals I ever went to. Uh, it was when I was like second grade. I was taking a dance class and my teacher was uh, playing, um, I think it's Anybody's, is that right? His name, the, anyway, the tomboy character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, she was playing him, them. And uh, so I went to see, uh, I went to see it when I was just a little, little girl. So anyway, I've always had a connection with that. So I'm excited to watch, to check out the, rewatch the movie and uh, we'll talk about it. So that'll be really fun. Uh, so that's what we have to look forward to. So let us know uh, what you think about things we talked about. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And Jen, how can, thank you so much, first of all, for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And how can people find you? Well, I want to say thank you so much for having me. People can find me on Twitter. I'm at Film Intuition. My website is filmintuition.com. And yeah, I'm pretty easy to find. You can also find me on you know, Instagram, Letterboxd, also at Film Intuition. Great. And Conrado, where can people find you? People can, people can find me on Twitter. I am at Coco Hits uh, New York. Uh, you can also read my blog, which is Coco Hits and Why the WordPress .com. You can also watch, which Rachel did last night, uh, my first, uh, my short film masterpiece that I just made, which is now available on YouTube called Smoked Paprika. Um, so you can, if you are tired of hearing me criticize all these movies and you want to put, see me put my money where my mouth is, you can see my short film. Yeah, check that out for sure. And make sure you're following the podcast at, at Criterion Pod on Twitter. And, uh, and we'd love to have your feedback there. And you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And make sure you're following me at the Hallmarkies Podcast, where we cover all things rom-com and all things Christmas and lots of pitches. So if you enjoy that, uh, check it out. We even have a whole episode where all we did was pitches. It was so fun. So check that out. Uh, all that will be in the description section. Uh, so thanks so much, Jen, again. And uh, we will talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.